Okay. Hello, I'm Lisa Bowerman and I play Bernie Summerfield and welcome to Audio Heads Podcast. Hello, this is Geeks Assembled Audio Heads and here we are again and this time we are doing a bit of magic with uh, with scarifiers and the magic ring, magic circle. It's a it's a sad tale because we've lost one of our leads from the free previous series, and so the character necessarily must disappear. And spoilers die. So um, yeah, let's. I'll let I'll let these fellas tell you how they interacted with uh, the magic circle. And please do um, spoil away. Let's start with Beef Dad because we can hear him. Yay. Um, yeah, it's quite a long one, this one. I mean, almost, you're just a couple of minutes short of two hours. Um, Terry Malloy doing Professor Dunning is brilliant, as always. And Phil Rose doing Bunny. You don't get much of him in this two-hour one, but every time he he's on, it feels good to me. Um, David Warner playing Harry Crow basically is taken over from the... Let's, let's how, how do I put this? Yeah. Yes. Well, he's taken over from Lionheart, who turns out to be dead, um, but does manage an appearance, which I think is pretty crazy. The opening scene with the um, the leader of the girls, girl guides and a bunch of girl guides, and they are, they're not just girl guides, they're witches, I, for God's sake. Um, and that absolutely creased me up at the beginning. Um, I just could not stop laughing. Um, the good thing about it is, is, yeah, it's quite a good story, but as I say, it's very long. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I did it. I did the whole thing all in one listen. Um, so you've got the magic circle. Um, but the magic circle is actually um, involved with an ancient Sumerian, is it Sumerian? I can't remember. Yeah, an ancient Sumerian demon. Um, brilliant concept. Um, yeah, I liked it. Um, there's an awful lot of faffing about in the middle. Um, you sort of backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And you've got the You've got the elderly lady, Iris, who is basically possessed by the demon. And she's a dear, sweet little old lady who gets possessed by this demon. And she's got this very low, very masculine demon voice. And, and it doesn't seem to be noticed by the other women that are with her. Um, which which made me laugh. Stephen Thorne playing Billy Banter was superb. I mean, Billy Banter keeps popping up all over the place. It's just so good. Um, he's dead. But there again, a lot of people in this are dead. Um, and uh, yeah, Cicely Giddings playing Lily, who actually turns out, turns up, Turns out to be um, <coughs> Lionheart's daughter. 
Um, and of course, Dunning, played by Terry Malloy, didn't even realise he was married, never mind that he had a daughter as well. Um, you know, and eventually saves her, saves her life, but at the same time as saving her life, he gets to speak to Lionheart, who possesses someone briefly. Um, you know, one thing you would not expect Lionheart to do is to take possession of someone, and that that, that was extraordinary. Um, it brought a big smile to my face when he did that. There were some pretty funny moments in this. Um, as I say, you know, the opening was just completely mental. <laughs> and that's my opening, my openings. Thanks, Beef Dad. Uh, what did you think about it, Lee? Well, I I came into this audio one with a bit of trepidation because knowing full well Nicholas Courtney had passed away, he would no longer be playing Lionheart. And the character of Lionheart, as we know, was going to be written out. Um, but they were searching for Lionheart, so I, I just wondered how they were going to do this. Um, was there going to be some audio, what they're, you know, like on the uh, kitchen room floor and they were going to reuse some audio. No, they didn't. Um, they just uh, got Stephen Forbes to do uh, sort of an, an impersonation of Nicholas Courtney near the end of the uh, audio. We, it, it's, it, it, it did work, but you could, you could tell it was Stephen Forbes, but it had reverberations of Courtney's voice in there. Um, it was sad. It, it was a sad, sad that putting a character to rest, putting an actor to rest, because you know, he's no longer with us, I suppose. Um, yeah, um, Harry Crow, David Warner's David Warner. Um, and we've got a catchphrase for Harry Crow now, straight away, bugger. Um, <laughs> so we've got Dunning's Oh Crumbs, and we've got bugger. Um, yeah, I agree with Beef Dad, the beginning with the witches, the uh, you know, brown owl, like Arkela, and all that, that was brilliant um yeah it's, it's a good tale it is long as you say it's, it's just short of two hours but i did the same as beef dad i, I sat it, sat through this in one in one go um i enjoyed it as i, I think i didn't you know, I don't enjoy it but it's, it's a good tale um it introduces harry crow in a good way um he's he's very similar to lion he's you know a bit, a bit rough around the edges a bit of a you know he's it's got a loud back, um, but a very good character. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a good team teaming up with Dunning and Crow, um, and the Magic Circle. There was a few nods. There's a few nods to Doctor Who in this, especially <laughs> especially the, uh, the the China Man in the sewers with the giant rats. Um, but, but made me laugh. Um, you know the the accent we're using. You know, not PC, but it's still funny. The humour was there. Um, yeah, it, it is a good, it is a good story, and it's it's a, it's a good addition to this series. To be honest, it's just a shame, you know, Nick Courtney passed away, and he had to make way for Harry Crow. But Harry Crow seems to be doing fine in his first story. So yeah, I enjoyed it. So it's over to you. Yeah, well, Nicholas Courtney did, you know, cast a big shadow. Um, people have had to, you know, rethink and rejigger his characters, his, what they've done with, like, like where he's done, placed his, wherever he's placed his hand in, in the, in the arts and in, in, in entertainment, they've had to, like, you know, create worlds or whatever around him, and, um, in this case, they, they let him be possessed, like let uh, the other guy be possessed by him, and um, that's uh, that's just the, that's just the the shadow that Nicholas Courtney casts. I mean, he he was uh, an amazing amazing man, too perfect for me. Anyway, uh, so. 
David Warner though is an is a really solid actor, and in this I got you know flashes of of when he played the Klingon uh, premier uh, Gorkhan. I he, there was just a little bit of that in it in the fact that he was such a such a tough guy, you know. I mean, what was his nickname? Thumper. Thumper Crow? Yeah, anyway. So Lionheart was the guy who socks everybody all the time. But this guy is called Thumper Crow. So maybe he thumps them like this instead of like this. I don't know. It's pretty fun, though. Um, you got, you got, uh, you also got Bunny in there for about five minutes is all. Uh, if it if he'd been in there longer, I would have asked Phil to join us because, you know, he's worth it. Phil is an amazing guy, and um, Terry Malloy once again. Oh my gosh, Edward Dunning! He's into all sorts of things, and he goes everywhere, and he's so soft spoken, and you just don't even think that he's going to get up into such mischief, but he totally gets into such mischief. Oh my gosh, he's just, he's, you know, uh, he's quite amazing anyway. Um, and the, the, the little old lady possessed by Amaleketh, oh my gosh. I mean, I remember reading that in the Old Testament, like, like the, they actually brought their children to this burning statue of Amalekath and just set these set babies and children on oh my gosh so much craziness for him it's messed up man really really messed up I mean there's child abuse and then they're sacrificing your children to a demon god Ugh. humans have been a mess anyway so you know to have that in this little old lady, oh my gosh, craziness! Yeah, like you get you get the you get the 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 rare, you know, freaked out gems in in these scarifiers. And I I, I agree with with you two fellas about the beginning. I mean, I thought I thought the little old lady possessed by Amalekith was the was the zinger for me. That was like, oh, what in the hell? Whatever. Oh, my gosh. Really? All the time. But um, I can see your point about the girl guides, the little witch uh, coven of girl guides. That was pretty. I, I, I can see how that would be hilarious. Anyway, um, glad we, we listened to this. Any, any of your favorite moments? Since I just gave mine. Yeah, um, goalie. Oh, okay. Um, well, I like the beginning where Dunning is in is in these predicaments with the Gale guides, with the uh, with the Chinaman, uh, you know, uh, and he's expecting Lionheart, and he, he's just stood there waiting to be saved. Uh, that is, you know, oh, he's not coming. Uh, <laughs> he's not coming. Uh, you know, because I think there was three scenarios at the beginning, and he's still waiting. He's, you know, he's in this predicament. Um, and then you say you've got Harry Crow, a retired, you know, retired police officer, um, taking up hobbies, golf, which is no good at. You know, he's playing golf, and you can hear in the background when he hits the hits the um, the ball. And you hear someone, "Oi, who hit, <laughs> who hit that?" I mean, and uh, he took up gardening, and everything was dead. Um, and also, Dudin putting his foot in it with the, the portrait. Uh, <laughs> you know how, how, how grotesque turd-like features. Yeah, that's the portrait of my wife. Um, just, just you know, funny. But one, I was giggling away to myself with the eventual Um Eventual Equist dummy, and you know, he's, he's in the room talking. You know, I come in. You know, this is Arthur and all like this or whatever. And, and then when you know when it's the demise of the eventual Equist, all that. All the ahs and the screaming's coming from the dummy. It, it, it's just, <laughs> it's so surreal, but it, it just it tickled me. Um, yeah, and also you've got the humour 
the humour for me is the highlight of this. I mean, you've got the supernatural, which really works well with these these stories. Humour and supernatural, you can't go wrong. But yeah, I enjoyed this. It's top notch audio stories. Over to you, Susan. Uh, yeah, well, um, Terry Malloy does nail it with the, the supernatural. Yeah. Anyway, I'm super glad that. Uh, that you reminded me of the of the dummy. That 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 was that was really cool. Okay, Deep Dad, what what, what was your favorite moment, or other than um, other than the little ladies? Um, I liked Horace Sprout. Um, I really did enjoy him. Um, I, I believe it was him that was locked in the cupboard, wasn't it? And. Um, so of course they go in and they have a conversation and we, you know, Terry Malloy is having this conversation um, but he thinks he's having this conversation with a rabbit but actually it's Horace in the cupboard and he doesn't realise that he's in the cupboard, he thinks he's having a conversation with the rabbit. That creased me up totally. Um, one bit that got on my nerves, there was one bit that got on my nerves in this, and that was when they did, I am the very model of a modern major general. And they sang it so badly. I mean, it wasn't, the, it was inaccurate, musically inaccurate. It was just so bad. And I, I can tell you that because I, I've done the part on stage more times than I care to remember. Um, yeah, including at the old Vic Theatre. Um, it was, uh, yeah, that, that sort of set my teeth on it. Um, and the whole business at the very end, um, with the, um, was it Devant was doing the magical stuff on stage with um, Lily and he was he was going to stick knives in her cut her up with a big saw big electric saw and chop her head off with a guillotine and of course at the same point at the same time you've got um the old lady who is possessed by the demon on stage with him <coughs> sorry and uh as far as she's concerned this well as far as the demon is concerned uh this is a sacrifice to the demon um but She's rescued just in time. And I, I always remember the, the old lady saying, is there not going to be a sacrifice? Uh, it's, it, it's just so funny. Of course, David Warner playing Harry Crow, he starts off the whole thing um, not believing in the supernatural. And basically get everything changed so he's ready to go on to the next stories of the scary fires um <clears throat> and as i say the the other moment that really came to me because actually it was a very good impression um was lionheart turning up at the very end and taking possession of someone to give Dunning instructions and to get him to look after his daughter for him. Magic, absolute magic. Uh, it's, it's absolutely typical, really, of the way that Lionheart's brain would have worked. If he found the opportunity to do that, to protect his daughter, to give Dunning instructions, 
that's exactly what he would have done. And of course, this is exactly what he does at the end of this. Brilliant. And over yeah. To you. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I found that moment really, really awesome. I, I think all of these moments that that we were that we were throwing honor <coughs> to the characters that that Nicholas did, you know, Cyberbrig or and the the Stephen Thorne uh, voicing his his voice. I you know whatever he, it's cuz it's cuz of what he, he is in and the the big the big hole that he leaves you got to fill it i mean it, it, he was just such a huge personality <clears throat> anyway um i i about love this i think that there's <clears throat> there's a lot of uh there's a lot of really brilliant uh moments uh, you guys have mentioned it was a bit too long. It, there was a bit of uh, fluff in there, so I I'm glad that uh, you fellas went through it with me, and um, and so let's give us a rating, and uh, let's start off with Beef Dad because um, yeah. Because, yeah. Hmm. One thing nobody's mentioned was the incredible feeling that you got when they did the theatre. Um, and that really did. It. You felt, listening to it, you felt as though you were in a theatre. Uh, it was just so good, so cleverly done. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, it's, it gets a nine and a half from me. I, it loses the half a point because of the the fact that it is, I think, a little over long. And, you know, it was padded, I think, a lot with the old ladies and certainly the business on the bus. Um, and, yeah. Yes, I quite like the um, bugger, bugger, bugger all the time from uh, from David Warner. That 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 really cr cranked me up. So there you go. All right, and um, Lee, what did what would you give this? And, and please give your uh, final say. Uh, yeah, uh, David Warner on the bus. Who's for a sing song? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I agree. There's a little bit of padding in the middle, uh, but. Yeah, it's long. So it's it's a two, nearly two hours long. But this this started way, way before. I think it was for for King and Country or the Secret Weapon of Doom. That uh, these were getting to nearly two hours long. Um, so I'm I'm assuming the ones further down the line are about the same um, length. Um, yeah, just because of the bit of padding in the middle, I'm going to go nine point five as well. It's still enjoyable. And I just noticed that you're wearing a Ghostbusters t-shirt. That's a apropos. Oh my gosh. Hilarious. <sighs> David Warner beware. You've got other company. Okay, um so let's uh let's see. I I really enjoyed this uh but I'm in agreement with the fellas about the length and um i'm also uh i'm also qu I'm, I'm quite taken with uh thumper crow i'm really going to enjoy listening to him <clears throat> but um you know there's a hole there and the hole is a whole point for me so <clears throat> this is going to get a nine <clears throat> and uh and I will, I mean, I feel like I'm being generous because it is a bigger hole than that, but anyway. Uh, so, but it was fun, and I I really like the Scarifiers, and hopefully we'll get to one with that that Bunny, Car Bunny is in for a long time, 
So that would be just brilliant because we'd love to have Phil Rose back. So um, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for, you know, listening along. Please enjoy these. Everything that we, we share <clears throat> has a, a tinge of magic to it. <laughs> Hello, kitty. <laughs> it's not a bunny, but it's a kitty. <laughs> And uh, the <clears throat> the magic was, you know, illusions and real magic in this. And, yeah, so do come back and partake in our magic again. We will do card tricks and juggling, and eventually I'll be sawed in half. It, it, it'll be a brilliant brilliant performance anyway thanks have fun bye bye